one's taking me for a ride. <laughs> Anyways, so I've had some tunes. Yeah? What is going on guys? We are back in Ohio with Don's Twin Turbo 2020 GT500. We're actually, I think it's technically a 21. This car is absolutely awesome. You guys saw the previous video where we made a review video of this car long before the Code Red GT500 came out. This thing's been around for a while and it is an absolute ripper. Um, the last video we made on it, we were talking about some issues that we saw before with the trans slipping and stuff like that. Uh, Don has spent some time and has figured out quite a few things on this car and uh, some little tweaks. So we'll go over that here shortly. The car now has 16,000 miles and makes 1200 plus wheel horsepower set up pretty much on that 1200 wheel horsepower setting all the time. Uh, Don has put a lot of the miles. He drives it all around and uh, it's kind of worked out pretty much all the bugs. So this thing you could drive pretty much anywhere. We're going to go take it for a ride and talk about those tweaks that he has made over the time and what he has noticed. But this thing is 100% daily driver uh, ready as well as you can go beat the crap out of it. Um, a testament for that is Don drove this from here in Ohio to Myrtle Beach threw it on the dyno, it made 1,200 wheel horsepower. Motherfucker! Dude! What's up, dude? You drive through the night? Yeah, all the way down to hang out with my boy. How's the car running? It's good, man. You win this bitch on the dyno? Maybe. It'll rip. <laughs> Don, you really leaving? Yeah. You drove in this morning. You gotta go back to work, bro. Got too much going on. Killing me. But you can't say that I'm a no show because I'm here <laughs> for you and the club. Drove it right back to Ohio. That's crazy. That's a street car right there. Doing my Palm Beach Dino, of course. This is the Helion sleeper kit. Has a plasma man manifold. Completely bone stock engine DCT rear end. That's crazy.
things I love about this car is it drives like stock. I mean, nothing fancy. You can drive this thing anywhere. You get some turbo noise. Screamer T51R mod, but you know, the AC, everything it's just it's like a stock car. You go out and rip on it, and it makes 1200 wheel horsepower, stock motor. I mean, it's just this car is incredible, absolutely incredible. All right, so we're just cruising, we got the AC on, and it, it's just an awesome car. Um, some things that Don has uh, figured out and had a little bit of issues. Um, initially, he had some issues with the way that the scavenger pump was pinned onto the crank. Um, I'll post some pictures of what was changed. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think that's the only major issue he had um, right after the car got done. He got it figured out and uh, that was the only major issue. Uh, there was also some issues with uh, some trans clutch slip and uh, some other just kind of funky things. And I mentioned that in the review video, you know, that it was something that was still being figured out. So Don actually did a lot of research and he went ahead and uh, he actually got a four post lift up in his uh, house. And then now he has a shop there too. But uh, he went ahead, drained the trans fluid out, um, the OEM fluid, and uh, put in uh, some uh, what Trevic recommends. I'll put the uh, name of it right here. Um, and the quantity, he filled it with the engine and trans cold, went out, drove it, and he has not had any wrench lights, any trans slipping. Uh, Ken at Palm Beach Dino recently took his twin turbo uh, built motor GT500 out. And, um, and he was having the same issues I was having. Uh, when it shifts fourth to fifth, fifth gear just starts revving to the moon and it's, it's not holding the power down. Uh, so, that, uh, so that's been the major change and what has really allowed this thing to become the daily drivable crazy car that this is. And remember, there's nothing fancy about any supporting mods or anything crazy. The trans is stock, the engine's stock. Um, we got a boost control, you know, set up right there. But this thing is, it, it drives like stock. Obviously, you can switch it over to manual and paddle it too and kind of really drive through the spin. Um, but you gotta remember, it, it can get sketchy. You know, it, it's a 1200 wheel horsepower car. It's on Toyo R888s. And I mean, I'm pretty sure it's on like 20 pounds right now. So it's, this is crazy. It, it really is crazy what this car can do in stockish form. tire pressure is like all the way up too you know ripping along the one other thing I want to talk about uh, and I haven't confirmed any of this yet but the 74 degrees inlet air I believe that's the air coming in to the charge pipe MCT is the air um, in the manifold 
and this plasma man seems to get pretty hot. So the plasma man, um, it's bolted directly to the head, obviously, right? And Don has had some issues with some throttle body just kind of wigging out. And that's been the other major tweak that Don has made to this car is he, uh, if you actually look in the video, there's a little bit of ugly uh, silicone around the throttle body. And that's for a reason. Don has been playing around trying to really tweak this car because he wants to drive this car. You know, it's not a garage clean. You know, this is a carbon fiber track pack GT500 with a twin turbo kit on it, 16,000 miles and it gets driven. Um, but the throttle body issue was something that he's kind of been working through and his theory was that it was getting too hot. And it seems pretty accurate because now that he's been able to isolate out the throttle body from the heat, um, it doesn't really do any of the goofy throttle body issues that he was having. So that's something interesting. We've been looking at some options to try to get the plasma man because uh, basically the charge pipe going to the throttle body will be at pretty much ambient temperature. You can touch it, it's cold. The intake manifold will be hot to the touch. And that's kind of strange. Uh, when, we go, when we get back, we're actually gonna put the uh, heat gun on it and uh, we'll go ahead and see what those temps are. But you can see right now inlet air is 74 degrees and the MCT is 105. That means that the air going through the charge pipe, the intercooler, everything is doing its job, but the intake manifold is sitting there just hot. And it's not something that you typically see from like a uh, ported Voss manifold or Cobra Jet or something like that. Um, the Plasma Man I don't have very much experience with because I don't really know anyone who runs it other than a full out race car like uh, Brett LaSalle, Snot Rocket, you know, and uh, those type cars. Running the Plasma Man on the street, I don't know, I haven't seen much data from it. So that's the one thing that we have uh, been talking about and trying to work through and you know, figure out some uh, solutions for some problems. Just absolutely insane. And you can drive this car. You can drive it. That's, that's the craziest thing. You can go out here, rip on it. Just make some turbo noise and just enjoy it. That is just crazy. Look at the miles. 16,000 miles. Bullshit, it's a joke. So, 120 at the charge pipe. 119 at the throttle body, which is a significant improvement since Don put this gasket here. Then at the intake, 130. Wow. 
So the manifold is retaining a lot of heat that I don't typically see with the plastic coyote intakes. So it's something we've been talking about, you know, we were thinking about even trying to change to a ported boss, but I don't think a boss is gonna fit under there. Otherwise, you know, obviously the engine's gonna be hot regardless, but you need your intake manifold as cool as possible. You guys leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think of, you know, the temps we're seeing. That 135, 136 back there. Yeah, so it's just heating up that air, you know. But getting the throttle body temps down has seemed to help quite a bit, as you can see right there. Just from there to there, this used to match the intake manifold. And then going down to the charge pipe, Nice. So I guess it presents the question, Andrew. Intake, intercooler, so 85 you, degrees. If you twin turbo the GT500, then I guess the bigger question would be, you know, should you keep, you know, the supercharger brick in there with a the recirc and keep the factory heat exchanger? Well, but remember, your air-to-air -air is working, right? 100%, but... Everything is cool, pretty much to here. It's working really well. That but manifold... It, but it would force you to drop, lower the motor so you can get a boss in there or something decent. If not, you're going to go to an OEM 350 or, you know, a GT manifold. Yeah. So there's a, a bunch of different ways of doing it. Um, a lot of different choices, but the strut tower brace, obviously we, we want to retain on the car without having right. to remove it because that, that's what a boss would require. For sure. Yep. So you could probably talk about that a little bit. But now what, uh, what trans fluid is this again? Um, I have it on the shelf right now. Yeah. So we talked about it last time, put it in the video and there were still comments, people asking, what'd you use? This is what Tremec calls for right here. Yeah, page two, right in the Tremec book. Yeah. Get it right off of Amazon, whatnot. And that made a drastic difference. Yeah. Ooh, there's the lights. Yeah. What a pretty car, man. Very nice shop. Yeah. Don's got his four posts right there too. Beautiful. All right guys, so that was the update on Don's Twin Turbo GT500. Got to drive it, uh, transfluid stuff, looking a lot better uh, than it was. Like I said, throttle body issues were an issue. It's now fixed with the uh, little lockout adapter plate he made. Now, the only other issue he's having is the plasma man is holding all sorts of heat. It's like a 30 degree difference between the air coming in here and what's on the manifold. This car has been sitting now for over an hour. This is cool to the touch. This will burn your hand. That's an issue. That's something that we think we're gonna address. Um, we were thinking about trying a GT350 ported manifold with a bullet throttle body. There's some, uh, basically some theory with behind large throttle bodies and smaller throttle bodies with boost. When you have a supercharger, you're pulling air through the throttle body. You want that opening to be as large as possible. Twin turbo centrifugals, they're forcing air through the throttle body, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the largest throttle body possible to make a lot of power. So we're gonna try a ported GT350, I think, or a ported Boss, but we kind of knocked the Boss out of the equation uh, because the Boss would look good, but it's gonna sit way too high. So we may be back in another video, swapping the intake manifold and trying to figure out what's gonna work better on here. Make sure you hit the like button, comment down below, like, let us know what you think, and hit the subscribe button if you're new, and we'll see you in the next one. See your friend? I know, I love it.